Hi, I'm Chris from the Mobile Internet Resource Center here to show off today a new product from Novatel and Verizon. This is the USB 730L USB cellular modem. Now, this is a uh, kind of caught us by surprise because Verizon hasn't put out a new USB cellular modem in two years since the USB U620L came out, uh, also by Novatel. Um, and we kind of thought maybe that whole product category was just going to, to fade into obsolescence replaced by mobile hotspots for most people, which for most people are actually the more practical device. But here it is, an updated USB cellular modem. And uh, let's open it up and see what's different about it, and I'll tell you what's new. Hey, okay. here we go. There's not a lot to this. There's the new one and the old one. There's and there's a uh, nothing really else in the box. It's uh, not much to it because even the drivers should ins auto install. You just got a quick little quick reference about what the flashing lights might mean and supported platforms. Windows 7 or better, Mac OS 10.8 or better, Linux or Chrome OS. And you need a USB 2 port. So there we go. So let's physically take a look. These do look from basically every angle just about the same, although it's kind of interesting. It doesn't say Verizon on it anymore. Still has the same status and data used light. The data used can go, be triggered to go off when you um, fill up your uh, data allotment. Um, on the side, this is a single tiny unofficial uh, antenna port. You can open up. And both of them have it, both the new and the old should be exactly the same. Let's see, there's the new one. Takes a little bit of fingernail work to get under there. Maybe a lot of fingernail work. And the old. Well, it looks like we might actually even need to pull off the tweezers for this, but um, okay. Well, we'll get back to that. Then on the back, there's the new one and the old one. Biggest change is the new logo. Yep, and they're still controlled by, go to my.usb. They've got the website to get to the control panel on them. You can slide open the back, actually. So it takes a little bit of force, but you can push the bottom down. And we're looking inside, and they both have basically the same internal layout, 620 and the 730. And uh, the SIM card is in a little pop-in. It's a nano SIM size, um, 4FF, and it goes in there and pops in. And then to use this into your computer, you just slide out the USB port, and you could angle this to go into a computer or into um, a router that has cellular tethering and just plug this in. And that right there is kind of the key difference versus uh, mobile hotspot, like this is Verizon's flagship hotspot, the 7730, um, is this creates a Wi-Fi hot, a Wi-Fi network out of the cellular signal, and then you can connect multiple devices to it, and you can also tether it to a computer over USB. Um, this only works over USB. It only works plugged into a computer or a router. There's no way to share this connection other than having a router do the sharing. But that means this is a lot simpler of a device and potentially has less things that can go wrong with it. Um, and in particular, because it doesn't have a battery and it's powered by whatever it's plugged into, you don't have to worry about the battery failing. Like, you know, hotspots after a year or so are prone to having battery issues. So simple uh, little USB stick like this, just smaller and lighter, gives you an easy way to carry around connectivity for a laptop. Now, what's different between this new version and the old version? And really, there's actually not a whole lot different. The main thing is they've just upgraded to a newer cellular modem chip inside. So they both support the exact same uh, cellular bands on Verizon. The bands they support are 2, 4, 5, and 13. So Verizon's most important bands, but does not support Verizon's band 66, which Verizon will be starting to roll service out on, which 
The 7730 is the first Verizon hotspot will that will support band 66. Um, this is a Category 4, LTE Category 4 uh, device, the older version. Um, category 4 means its max theoretical speed is 150 megabits per second. This new one is a Category 6 device, which means its max theoretical speed is 300 megabits per second. That is a huge improvement, um, but it really requires that the tower have been upgraded to that. You'll never see anything close to those max theoretical speeds, but the new one does have a lot more headroom to take advantage of LTE Advanced Carrier Aggregation capabilities to combine multiple bands. Uh, speaking of combining multiple bands, the older Category 4 device did support LTEA carrier aggregation, but only a few comp band combinations were supported. The new one supports a lot more, which means you know, you're much more likely to run into faster speeds on Verizon's network. Um, and really, that's basically it, is the upgrade to the, the more future-proof modem. If you have the older version, no need to rush out and get it. Um, if you're shopping for a USB stick, of course, get the newer one. It's more future-proof. Now, the real question is, for most people, should you go with a, a mobile hotspot or a USB stick if you're in an RV or in a boat or something where you're not needing the battery power of this and need to carry it around with you? Um, and all things being equal, it would be nice if there was a, a USB stick option that had um, that we could really solidly recommend, but two major downsides of this. One, there's only a single antenna port, which means you cannot take advantage of MIMO antennas, whereas the hotspot has two antenna ports, so it can take advantage of MIMO antennas, and MIMO antennas can make a huge difference in performance, uh, being able to have that dual element antenna. And then also, the Verizon's latest hotspot is an LTE Category 9 device, which means it can go 450 megabits per second theoretical peak speed using three channel carry aggregation. This is category six, only two channel carry aggregation, 300 megabits. So this has got a lot more future performance potential um, than this does. But now in practice, is there gonna be with the current state of Verizon's network, will this solidly outperform this? We don't know, we're actually going to test that and see how well it compares. Um, but that's, for most people, the flexibility of a mobile hotspot really wins out, and they cost the same. One, no, actually, this is more. That's 249 ah, 249 199 both non-contract price. So you're paying more, getting less capability. Uh, so unless you really are focused on needing the simplicity of just plug in with USB and go, um, that's kind of steer most people towards this. And again, as far as the plug-in and go, this is supposed to have the built-in soft driver, so it should work with just Mac and Windows without needing to install anything else. Um, and you can kind of arrange your angle of attack as you plug it in. So there we go.